Right now, film emulation is growing in popularity and everyone's kind of looking for which one is right for them. There's a lot of different options at different price points, different looks, and sometimes it can get kind of difficult to figure out which one works best for you. And this video is just meant to show why I choose Dehancer as my choice of film emulation, having tried a few of them, not all of them. Uh, but in my opinion, Dehancer is the easiest to use if you have no prior film emulation experience. Uh, it's very straightforward and overall Overall, it's really easy and fun to use. You know, I can cut all the bullshit. We can just get right into Premiere. So you might notice I'm wearing different clothes because when I went to edit this, I realized that the screen recording I had done for the tutorial, uh, the cursor wasn't showing. So you literally could not tell what I was doing, what I was talking about. Uh, so days later, we're gonna do the tutorial properly this time. Now we are in Premiere and I have two of these example clips. I have Dehancer on them right now. Let me go ahead and just delete them from both. And then I also have these clips of them fully graded uh, over here. Um, I chose these clips. This one's kind of a brighter scene walking through uh, Manhattan. This is also a daylight scene, but it's a bit uh, hazier, a bit grayer, a lot less going on. So I feel like these would be good examples to use for the purpose of this video. Uh, so jumping right into it, we'll go ahead and click that first clip in our effects tab. We'll go ahead and look up Dehancer and we'll go ahead and throw that on. Just a quick note, there is no one right way to do your color grading, um, especially with Dehancer. This video is more just showing how I use it and how I get the look that I want. And I just wanna emphasize that the way that I use it is not the way to use it. There are many other ways to utilize this plugin. It's a very powerful tool for film emulation and I'm just gonna walk through how I've been using it for a little while. Okay, so before we go ahead and open any of these tabs in Dehancer, as you can see here on the left, you can see that I do have Lumetri Color open before it on the effects chain. And what I'd like to point out is that you can actually add some of your own basic corrections in the Lumetri Color tab or your editing software of choice before doing anything in Dehancer. I choose not to because I feel like I can get the looks that I want with Dehancer alone, um, but that is something that you can do and it's perfectly fine. It's okay to do. Uh, it won't mess with Dehancer at all. So if you feel the need to do that, you can go ahead. I'm gonna delete it for now. First thing we're gonna open is our input tab. This is basically where we're gonna do our Rec 709 conversion and basic corrections. So by default, the source is on Rec 709, which would assume that our footage is, is already in Rec 709, which it's not. So what we're gonna do is choose camera and what the enhancer allows you to do is actually pick the camera and camera profile, picture profile that you shot on to get the most accurate uh, film emulation. So you'll see, uh, I already did it, I did it kind of quickly, but we have this big list of cameras. And so I'm scrolling down to find FX3, S-Log3, S Gamma 3 Cine, which is the camera and picture profile that I typically shoot on. We have these sliders here right below uh, the camera selection. These are pretty straightforward. They're basically just basic correction. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide down my exposure slider because uh, I think the footage was a bit overexposed. Maybe turn up the temperature a little bit. Uh, we have tint compensation as well. Slide it to the right, you get your magenta. Slide it to the left, you get your green tints. I'm gonna leave it at default for now. And then defringe has to do with adjusting and correcting the chromatic aberration in your footage. The enhancer uses a lot of powerful algorithms uh, for some of their effects here like halation and bloom. Um, and sometimes a lot of chromatic aberration in your footage uh, can tend to mess with that. So what these defringe sliders do will allow you to uh, adjust and compensate for that. I usually leave them at default because I never run into any issues, but if needed, they're there for you to use. Next, we have probably my favorite part of Dehancer, which is getting to pick your film profile or your film stock. Um, and so this is basically just gonna allow you to pick the type of film that you would be shooting on if you are actually capturing motion picture film with a film camera. I like to go for 500T just because this is actually a currently available film stock provided by Kodak that you can buy if you were to shoot motion picture film. Another one I like to use is Portra 800 just because I have some point and shoot film cameras and I use Portra 800 for those and I just I just kind of like the way it looks. I can also open up this push slash pull slider. Basically what this is going to allow you to do is just adjust the color contrast, the exposure, saturation levels of the film profile that you've chosen. Uh, and Dehancer has just included this because when you're actually shooting physical film, regardless of what stock you're using, using the way it's exposed, lighting conditions. There's a lot of different factors that can affect the final look. And so this is just gonna give you the option to kind of simulate that. I usually leave it as default and we're gonna move on. Now, before we move on to stuff like film developer and film compression, we're gonna open up expand, uh, which is something that Dehancer actually recommends you do right after choosing your film profile, which we just did. This is just where you're gonna adjust your black point 
points and your white points. I have my Lumetri scopes open here on the right, so you can kind of see what it's doing. When I bring this slider to the right, it's dragging that waveform down closer to zero on the IRE graph. And I can do the same with my white point, which is just going to bring it up a little bit. I'm going to bring my black point down just a little bit more, uh, darken those shadows, uh, and that looks pretty good to me. Next, we're going to open up Film Developer. I, I already have all of these sliders opened up. Before you mess with any of these sliders, you're going to want to enable the film development. And then I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of contrast with the slider. Gamma Correction is going to do something kind of similar. I usually don't touch it very much. Color Separation, I leave all the way at the max. But Color Boost, this is where we get all of our saturation. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that up and you can see right away that all these reds on the signs the blue in the sky the cyan on this sign here on the left um they all get a lot more saturated and it's important to note that the way color boost works is a little different than traditional saturation let's say in my Lu, uh, lumetri color tab in premiere because again the goal of dehancer is to emulate film and obviously print film behaves differently than digitally editing stuff that was shot on a digital camera so here's before and then after we can see it's done a lot and i'm starting to like the way this looks next we're going to open up film compression and so so when we go ahead and enable it, what you're going to see is that the highlights or the brighter areas, especially here in the street and here in the sky, um, have kind of lowered and you can see on the Lumetri Scopes tab that the highlights kind of shrank down a little bit. What film compression is doing is emulating how highlight clipping works on actual print film. Traditionally, when you're shooting on negative film, the highlight clipping occurs much later than it would on a digital camera. So this is just kind of emulating that. We have our impact slider, which is basically just going to adjust how much of the film compression is going to take effect once you enable it. Our white point, which is basically our threshold for the film compression. If I turn it all the way down, you can see it's a lot brighter. Turn it all the way up, it pushes everything down a little bit more. Tonal range is similar to threshold, but basically what it's going to allow you to do is adjust how much of the image, specifically all the way from the highlights to the shadows is going to be affected by the film compressions. So when I turn it up, you can see that the compression starts to take effect uh, throughout the entire image rather than just the highlights. And finally, this color density slider is going to allow you to adjust the saturation of your colors in the image, depending on how much closer they are to the highlights versus the shadows. Because again, on print film, colors behave a little bit differently depending on whether or not they're closer to highlights versus shadows. We've already messed with our black and white points, so we're gonna open up our print. This is where Dehancer allows you to choose what kind of physical prints that your film would be printed on. So you have four different options. Linear is basically just a raw input from the plugin itself without adding in any of the influences that printing the film would do to the image. And then we have these four options, Cineon Film Log, Fujifilm, Kodak, and then another Kodak glossy paper. The one that I choose the most is this Kodak 2383 print film. Um, I'll quickly click through the other ones just so you can see what they're like. There's Cineon, the contrasts, the image, so you're, you'd have to add that after. After Fujifilm, the Kodak that I just picked, and then glossy paper. I'm gonna go with Kodak just because I like the way this looks, but I see that it's added a lot of blue tint to the image, so we're gonna go ahead and correct that uh, in the next step. There's also all of these sliders when you choose your uh, print profile. Uh, they're pretty straightforward and they work very similar to uh, the stuff that I explained in film compression. Tonal contrast, color density, you can change your print exposure, as well as your target white slider. This is kind of like adjusting your white balance. I leave all of these default. I might actually bring this target white down, make everything slightly warmer. Next, we have our color head. This is very similar to how I would adjust this image using my Lumetri color tab in color wheels and match shadows, midtones, and highlights. You can adjust the exposure for each of them as well as add a tint. And these are probably the most straightforward things in this plugin. I'm gonna add a bit of yellow. I'm gonna add a slight bit of green and then maybe just a touch of red. You also have this checkbox that says gang. What this is gonna do is allow you to adjust all three of these at once. So you'll see that if I slide one of them and let go, the two move with it. I don't really use it that way, but you can if you'd like. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. And then here we have our shadows, midtones, and highlights. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some cooler tones in the shadows, maybe a little bit more warmth in the midtones, and then maybe a little bit of cooler colors in the highlights. So if I disable it, that's before, that's after. It's very subtle, but I think it's added a lot to the image. It's gotten rid of a lot of that blue tint that I mentioned earlier. And I'll just quickly mention that this preserve exposure basically makes sure that the exposure levels of your image aren't changed depending on how you've adjusted this color because sometime in print film, 
uh, that can happen. Next, probably everyone's favorite part, we have film grain. So what Dehancer has are different presets that best represent how eight millimeter, 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter, and 65 millimeter film would treat film grain. They also have these presets for halation, bloom, film damage, film breath, and gate weave. So all of these, we're gonna get to them. And they each also have a custom tab, which will allow you to make fine adjustments uh, to the characteristics of your film grain. Recently, I've just been using these presets because I like the way they look and I'm able to get the image that I want just by using them. I'll go ahead and do 35 mil to 50. Uh, as you can see, there's grain here, uh, but if I disable it, the grain's gone. If I choose, let's say eight millimeter film, 250, it's a lot grainier because eight millimeter film is smaller, so the grain is more prominent once it's blown up. And the different ISO values will just increase the amount of grain that's on the image. Let's do a quick custom profile for this. I'll go ahead and choose 35 millimeter, 250 as my default. I like the size of the grain currently. I might increase the amount slightly. Film resolution, I wanna turn that up. We'll just get a finer grain. And the next three sliders is where you'll adjust the amount of film grain in the shadows, midtones versus highlights. Here at the bottom, this chroma slider will kind of impact the individual saturation of the film granules all across your image. I kind of like to leave it at default. And then film type positive versus negative just refers to if you were shooting on positive film versus negative film. Positive film tends to have a softer film grain while negative film is, you know, here you go, slightly harsher, a lot more in the highlights. I'll go ahead and play it back just to make sure that I like the way it's looking and I'm very happy with how this film grain looks. It's very subtle, not too much going on, but it's noticeably there. Next, we have Halation, which everyone loves. Uh, it's gone super popular. Everyone loves blasting their footage with Halation. Halation is basically a film emulsion effect uh, that adds a red orangish halo around your highlights and areas of high contrast, so your high contrast edges. So you'll see that, let's see if I scroll in on this sign, um, area of high contrast between the shadows of of this building versus the red glowing sign. There's a lot of halation. There's that red, red orange halo versus let's say if we just look at this part of the wall, we don't get that red orange halo because these aren't super bright highlights and there's not a lot of high contrast in this part of the image. So again, you could open up uh, a custom profile, adjust it to how you want. I'm gonna leave it at default and I'm actually not going to mess with a lot of this and I'm going to keep it on a super 35 preset. Zoom out, I think that looks good before, after. Next we have bloom. I'll go ahead and enable it. You'll see that we have this glow around the highlights. When you're shooting on film, bloom is just caused by light dispersion onto the background from uh, areas that are really bright. So your highlights. Again, there's all these different presets. So I had it on 35, eight millimeters is going to be a lot more prominent all the way to 65 where it's a lot more subtle. And then of course you could open up a custom profile. I'm going to leave it on 35 for now. Film damage is basically just going to be artifacts in your film because there's a lot of imperfections when you're shooting motion picture film. If I turn it to super eight, yeah, you'll see right there that there's there's a lot more going on. That's not what I want for this clip. Let's go with 35 millimeter. I'll play it back. And then you can see there's some like white specks, black strips going on in the footage. We can open up a custom profile. This is where you can really dial in the different types of film damage that would be present in film. Dust versus hairs versus scratches. And then you can adjust all of them together. I mean, my boy just hopped on Dark Souls. Uh, but again, I'm just gonna leave this on Super 35. Next, we have Film Breath. And if I enable it, what you would see when I play back the footage is kind of flickering highlights and flickering saturations between pink and magenta, or the tint, I guess. It's very subtle here. This is just caused because there's a mechanical mismatch when you're shooting motion picture film, when the individual film frames get pulled through the frame window. Um, they don't exactly line up perfectly. So even like the small distances from the film to the actual front of the camera, uh, like the different positions of it will all adjust the way the image comes out. Again, custom profile, but I'm just gonna leave this. Uh, I'm actually going to turn it off. I don't think I want it for this clip. Next, we have gate weave. If I enable this, you'll see that there are some jitters uh, in the film. It's not very noticeable because this wasn't a static shot. It's handheld, so you can't really notice the fine jitters of the frame. Again, when you're shooting motion picture film, as the film passes through the gate window, um, it's not always super precise. So there can be different position adjustments of each individual film frame. And as a result, you get these jitters. Once again, you can make a custom profile, but I'm gonna leave it at Super 35. Next, we have overscan. If I go ahead and enable it, we kind of get this film mat on top of our image. Typically, when film is being 
scanned, it is scanned with greater area than the actual image in the frame. But usually it's cropped down back to the image before it's fully presented. But in some cases, this extra area can be left. So you'll see that these are the perforations that would get pulled by the film camera as it's being shot. And there's a lot of these parameters here in Dehancer. I can go ahead and shut those perforations off. I could make them positive so they're white instead of black. I like to leave them off just because I like the way it looks as kind of a four by three film mat. You can adjust the gate shape. So if we pay attention to the corners on the gate, this will make them a little pointier. This will make them a, a bit rounder. And then again, you shut that off. I'm gonna keep it on normal. And then finally, we have different types of gates just for different types of cameras, different types of motion picture film shooting. I'm gonna quickly scroll through them with the perforations on just so you can see what they're like. We have super eight millimeter, standard 16, super 16, ultra 16. Super 35, which is what I'm going to leave this as, widescreen 35, and then Ultra Panavision. There's more parameters down here, like the exposure of the gate. You can increase its scale. So I'll go ahead and move that up and you'll see that it zooms out a bit. And then defocusing the gate will basically make the gate blurrier and less sharp. And then something that I do kind of check off sometimes is static gate. So you'll see if I play it back, the gate is now animated. Again, you don't get smooth playback all the time with the Enhancer because it is such a heavy plugin, but you can see that the edges of this gate are animated now versus when I check it, solid and it's not moving. And then finally, we have vignette. Very straightforward. It's just going to add a vignette to your footage. There's really not a lot to say about that. And then you can adjust the center aspect ratio of the vignette, feather size, exposure, etc. And at the very bottom, we have some exposure tools. We have false color with 16 exposure zones, and this will just help you during your color grading process dial in the image a bit more. Moving on to our second clip, we're going to go a lot faster this time. Go ahead and add Dehancer. I'm not going to be explaining nearly as much. I'm just going to go through my process. We're going to choose the camera. We're going to look for the FX3 and the correct pro picture profile. We're going to warm this up just a little bit. We might add a bit of green. Next, choosing our film stock. We're going to do, let's do gold 200 on this one. Open up expand, adjust that contrast with the black points and white points. Film developer, open up contrast boost, open up our color boost. Go ahead and enable it. Boost the contrast just slightly before versus after. Honestly, that kind of did nothing, but we're gonna leave it. And then we're gonna turn up our saturation just a bit. Film compression, you're gonna see the highlights get squashed a little bit. I'm gonna leave this as is. Next, our print, we're gonna go with the Kodak print. Now this is super contrasty, so we're gonna open expand back up and we're gonna turn this back up. There you go. We're gonna open up film developer and we're gonna turn that back up as well. Back to prints, I think we're just gonna turn up this exposure slightly because those shadows got squashed a bit. Moving on to our color head, I'm gonna add a bit of yellow just cause I kinda like the yellow look. Let me make sure to enable that. Slight bit of green and then a little bit of cyan. Actually, we're gonna add a little bit of red. Highlights, midtones, shadows, a little bit of warmth in the shadows, a little bit of warmth in the midtones, and we're gonna cool those highlights down. I'm starting to like the way this is looking. Film grain, we're gonna use a preset again. I'm gonna choose, let's do something a lot grainier. Let's do eight millimeter. Let's go ISO 500, make this really grainy just cause we can, just to see how it looks. Halation, we are going to turn that on. There's not a lot going on in this image. Probably the only part that the halation is noticeable would be right here when the tree meets the sky. Let's do super eight, kind of get everything dialed in. We have the super eight grain. We can do the super eight halation for the bloom as well. Super eight, get it super nice and glowy. For our film damage, we're going to enable it. We're going to turn on super eight, except I don't want any of these black strips in the footage. We're going to turn down the amount of scratches. I believe those black strips are scratches. I think we're going to turn down everything else as well. That's really a lot going on. If I play it back, this looks a lot more like how I want it to look. Film breath, we are gonna go to Super 8 just so I can show you a better example of how film breath works. If you can see, it's really going back and forth between pink and magenta. That is actually pretty strong, so we're just gonna go back to 35. I'm not sure if I like it that strong. Gate weave, we're gonna turn it up to Super 8 because we're trying to get the Super 8 look in this clip. As you can see, this is a static shot that I used a tripod for. The, super, uh, the gate weave is a lot more noticeable. And then finally, overscan, let's enable it. Choose Super 8, and I think I'm going to turn that perforation to positive just because we can. And we're gonna shut off static gate. Not the smoothest playback uh, because again, a dehancer is a very heavy plugin, but this is probably the final look for this clip. So if you are interested in checking out Dehancer, again, I highly recommend it. I think it's very powerful, very easy to use. There's a lot of tools in Dehancer that other film emulation plugins, uh, power grades, LUTs, etc., don't have. Dehancer is expensive. It is an expensive plugin. 
but it is also a very powerful plugin that has a lot of use cases and a lot of tools. So if you are going to pick up Dehancer, it would be awesome if you guys could use my affiliate link in the description below, as well as the promo code that it provides for you, Vids by BB, will give you 10% off your order. It would be a great way for you guys to support the channel, support the content, support all the stuff that I'm making. I'm active on YouTube again, uh, especially since school is starting soon. We're gonna be posting a lot more, getting a lot more content out on YouTube rather than Instagram because it's a bit more manageable for my schedule. And if there's anything else you guys want to see, please absolutely let me know in the comments and I'll get that video out to you guys ASAP. And that's all I have for today. I hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys pick up Dehancer and thanks for watching.